cleanup before water change Wednesday. What, no applause this week, guys? All right, water change Wednesday today again, guys. Welcome back. New viewers, water change Wednesday is a question and answer format. You ask me a question out in the comment section below the video, I'll answer it there, and then I try to answer it here. My best friend. Look at him, he's right there. One of my best friends. He loves me. My other friend is there too. These guys aren't afraid of me anymore. It's because I'm always in here, guys. Guess why I had to clean up the floor in the studio? Because I was in here dropping popcorn last night while I was watching Netflix. All right, let's get into Water Change Wednesday. When Sylvia's away, this is my hangout. I'm like, I hibernate in here. I don't go anywhere, just the kitchen and here. Lots of questions today, guys. You know, there's going to come a time, I don't want to say it because it might jinx it, but there may come a time when I'm, I don't know how I'm gonna to respond to everybody. Let me just review a little bit, guys, about what we did last week. Last week, the point I was trying to make is that sometimes testing before your water change just lets you know where you're at. I don't know if I put that across well enough. The reason why I said that is just so, you know, you don't always have to make a water change or you can, you can go a little less than you normally would. It's not like you're just blindly changing 20% every week. If you're a beginner, it's probably the way you should go, you know, 20% weekly on a nano of 20 gallons or less, at least for the first six months, is a good practice. It's days not... ago, three days ago. I usually go back six days. Five. Right, here we go. Sarah asks, uh, Hey Tom, how long does it take corals like GSP, Green Star Polyp, for you new guys, or Pipe Organ, to open up once it's acclimated and added to a tank. And she says, thanks, love the videos, new subscriber. Awesome, Sarah. Guys, look, for everything I say, there's probably an alternate answer in terms of time, but usually you have to give a coral at least a week. Sometimes they'll boom, open up right away. If your parameters are the same as where they came from, you know, if it wasn't shipped overnight or if it was one tank to another, that's what happens to mine. Like when I go from the 20 gallon into the 10, it's usually almost immediate within a few hours. Because my parameters are very close, very similar. So I would give things at least a week before you start getting concerned. And green star polyp, you can give more than that. Sometimes they'll close up and they won't open for weeks at a time or they'll start to open and then they close again. So that's what I would tell you, Sarah. I'm still on five days ago. It's because I'm answering almost every one. Ryan asked about my ATO in the biggest tank and I use the here I go again. Things don't click in my brain right away. Hold on, it'll come. I use the smart ATO. The smart ATO, 69, 70 bucks around there. It's got the sensor. That's the one I use, Brian. Thanks for watching the intro of the couple weeks ago where the rocket thing. Thanks a lot. Taziki. No, that's not how you say it. Ta T-A-Z-C-C-I. How do I say that? Tazi, Tazi says, do you clean your refugium? That's a good question. And he says, I have a 20 gallon water box. One thing that's stopping him from making a refugium in the middle chamber is all the unwanted stuff that grows in it. And I know it can be good for the tank and I need to lower nitrates, but 
All right, well, uh, you know, I'm just gonna call you Taz. That's it. Yeah, well, that I did a whole video on that. You know, don't be afraid to let the refugium go and grow and just pull out a little bit of the Chato once a month. Like I said, I just did it for the first time in, I would say, three months. It was so packed in there. I should have taken a picture of it, but of course I didn't. Uh, it was so packed in there that when I pulled it out, it came out in a square block of Chato. It was all the way down to the bottom. Here's a good one. Daryl asks, uh, he's just uh, new to reefing and he's asking me about particular size tanks. And he's probably read stuff about you know, larger tanks are more forgiving, and you know, that's partially true. But if you stick to a great maintenance schedule, Daryl, and you do some watching of my videos, you'll learn that a smaller tank won't really have an effect on your success. So he was asking, should he do 40 gallon or 60 gallon? And I told him a good starting size, if you wanna do a real nano to kind of keep your workload down and maintenance less, start out with a 20 gallon. And my 20 gallon is forgiving enough. You know, you can skip or miss a water change every once in a while, even you can miss two. I mean, I had missed two on this and had no problem. So I would say 20 gallons, it's cheaper to start up, cheaper on salt, cheaper to add coral in because you don't need that much. So try that out, Daryl. Lee says, Tom, chill. And this is, I'm figuring this is the way he said it. Tom, chill. The channel is cool. The content is great. Keep the train chugging. Are new to branches the best natural way of eliminating Aptasia? Lee, I have to say, my go-to is the peppermint shrimp. I haven't tried the Nuda branches enough. I did try them, I believe, two times in my career when they still, like over the last five or six years. And I just, they disappeared in there. On fire, man. And I didn't see uh, any of the Aptasia disappear. My peppermint shrimp, they always work for me. I had a few in here. Remember, it was a couple videos ago. They're gone. This has been two weeks maybe now I've had him in here. I have one in the six. There was a big one I think I showed you. That one's gone. And the ones up in the Pico, I had a couple little ones after we did the, uh, you know, Aptasia X. After I did that, uh, they grew back a little and now I only see one little nub of one that is probably gonna be gone. Maybe uh, the peppermint shrimp's picking at it a little bit at a time, but they are the go-to for me. I do notice though, however, which is common, but it hasn't been in mine until the 3.5 gallon, he's starting to come up and try to pull food. Out of the Duncan coral. It's going in the Duncan coral and trying to tear the food out of the oral disc of the Duncan coral. So what I'm gonna to try to do is feed the peppermint shrimp first, kind of throw some of the frozen food in his direction, and then let him eat, you know, kind of sneaky, get him to eat, and then feed the Duncan. These are from when I was complaining about the low views on the, that Sunday video. I gotta skip up here. I'm gonna get way behind, but you guys don't. This mind. is a quickie. This is a good one. Mike asked, Do you have to wait till coralline algae grows in to add corals? And you know, Mike, when I first started, I thought the same thing because there was such a huge emphasis on coralline algae growth. <laughs> because it does help your tank in regards to keeping unwanted algae away. It's difficult for hair and particular algaes to grow over 
coralline algae. It's a great thing to have, but you might be waiting way too long for some to grow in before you put corals in. If you can get really lucky, try to find some already seeded cultured live rock that has a lot on it already. And then it'll spread and you'll be okay, but you do not have to wait till coralline grows in to put your corals in. And another thing, coralline algae growth shows you have a good level of calcium in your water because coralline predominantly grows from a higher level of calcium in your water. IBEW checks in on me. Dude, don't get all stressed. You know, this was from the video before. Guys, let me make one thing clear here. I was a little bit concerned about the views. I was a little PO'd. I mentioned it to you on the video because I like to give you like a behind, you know, what's going on in my head, but I'm completely good. Look at me now. Even this past Sunday's video didn't do that great. But I'm not stressed about it. All right, Jay asked, how long did I let my 10 gallon cycle before the first water change? The live rock in there has already been cultured. It came from my vendor fish guy Mike, so I didn't really have to cycle it. However, I still went slow before I did any kind of water change. I wanted to see what things would do, what would grow on it. That originally, remember guys, it was gonna be the experimental tank. But I waited, it was probably a month before I did the first change and I tested first. I mentioned to him in the comment, if he was trying to decide on when to change water, if you're cycling a tank, you want to wait until your ammonia is zero and your nitrite is zero. When it's zero, then you can do a water change. But then I told him, let it go another week to see if it spikes back up after the water change. If you're testing zero again, ammonia and zero nitrite again, then you're ready to add coral at that point. Uh, maybe add fish, coral, whatever, fish and coral, whatever you want to do at that point. Go slow, Jay. All right, guys. So I just wanted to thank you guys. You, you know, you're such a nice group of people out there. I really, really believe that. I appreciate the nice things you've said about the channel, about me. It's working out really well. So just keep in mind when I vent a little bit, it doesn't mean I'm all out of control, like annoyed or stressed. It's just me being me, venting a little bit. Plus it makes good entertainment when you see me mad, you know, if I'm like, you know, if I'm like perfect all the time. What good is that? I think, I think I've done enough guys. I, you know, I'm not even counting. I, I looked at the clock. I've been going for like a half hour straight. I think what I'm gonna do Sunday is we're going to add some of these questions on Sunday. And we'll do a water change Wednesday, Sunday. All right, have a great one. Thanks for everything you guys are doing. New viewers, you know what to do. And I'll see you Sunday. Take care now. Yeah, you didn't, you liked my arm during the video. Now you're hiding. I have to feed them, I guess. Oh, jeez, I'm still on.